Hey, this is Angry Bill with Pre-Hospital Wisdom. In my career, I've been able to work with dozens, if not hundreds, of partners. I've seen most variations on the EMS provider. Some partners have been aggressive, while some have been more laid back. I've worked with men and with women. I've worked with medics on their first day with a CERT and ancient medics who had experience with ICFE, full-time medics, part-time medics, medics who are long-time EMTs, and some zero-to-hero medics. Some got their start in a city, some in more rural agencies. Some began their EMS careers in other countries before immigrating to America. Medics I've worked with have become politicians, police officers, doctors, nurses, firefighters, engineers, physician assistants, teachers, lawyers, accountants, professors, horse masseuses, really, uh, mercenaries, flight medics, soldiers, financial advisors, convicted criminals, and bureaucrats. That list is way too short, but that's all I can come up with right now. In the end, none of that matters. What matters is how well they do their job. Are they a good pre-hospital provider? To me, I can best describe a good provider on a grid with two axes, smart and skilled. Each provider can be ranked on a zero to 10 scale for didactic knowledge, smart, and for their psychomotor skills, skilled. Between those two, we can create a matrix. It looks like this. A smart provider has the cognitive skills, the book learning. I have worked with partners that can explain and draw Starling curves and carboxyhemoglobin curves and interpret ABGs and have never met a home med they haven't heard of. Every EKG is correctly and thoroughly interpreted. Every drip medication has the correct drip rate calculated. And the provider can explain Hashimoto's thyroiditis, Crest syndrome, and Takotsubo cardiomyopathy. The opposite end of the SMART scale is a tough one to name. Dumb, and it's too insulting. Ignorant, too insulting again. Hypocognitive, there we go, hypocognitive. You can grade a provider from a hypocognitive zero to a SMART 10. A skilled provider is one that can do the physical requirements of the job well. They consistently hit IV lines, even the hard ones. They're gunslingers with an endotracheal tube in their hand. Skilled providers may not specifically know why the medical reasons why a procedure is needed, but I'll be damned if they don't always know the exact moment a tube needs to be placed, and they get it. But going even further, they're skilled at calming a chaotic scene, setting a patient and family members at ease, and making everyone feel like it's going to be okay. The greatest part of a high ranking on the skilled axis is that it has nothing to do with your cert level. Experienced DMTs can rank really highly on the skilled side. On the other end, we've all worked with partners who engender no confidence in their ability to complete tasks. Once I had a partner who was attending and I was driving, but I intubated three people that shift. My partner did not have the skills to intubate patients, so I had to do it. Three times, that's a rare driving hat trick. It can be exhausting to need to spend extra time on every scene before transporting, just in case I need to get their line for them. Some unskilled providers are just plumb asocial. They have a knack for unintentionally pissing everyone off on a scene. Patients don't feel calm, family members complain, and other providers and firefighters and police officers get upset. The easiest way to think of it is to divide the results into four quadrants. Smart skilled, hypocognitive skilled, Smart incapable and dumb incapable. There are infinite variations actually possible, but the quadrant approach is easiest to understand for this model. The partners I most enjoy to watch work are smart and skilled, of course. A dumb and incapable partner makes for an exceedingly long shift and quiet thoughts of despair. The other two choices are fine, and some of my favorite partners fall into the skilled but hypocognitive category. Y'all know who you are. So these are my rankings of the partners that I like to work with, smart and skilled. Smart and skilled is a great combination. These medics know why they're doing what they're doing, plus they're good at doing it. Hypocognitive skilled. Hypocognitive and skilled medics are just fine in my book. A partner that may not know why he or she is intubating a patient, but knows that the tube is needed or not, and hits it quickly, is a fine partner. These medics probably have the easiest time on the most critical patients. You can run an unstable VTAC just fine without needing to understand ejection fractions or minute volumes. Keep in mind, most good EMTs fall into this category. They haven't had a lot of school, but they can be really good at skills. And there are EMTs that I really love to work with. Smart and capable. Now we're getting into partners that make for a long shift. What good is it to be able to diagnose LVH via the Romholt SD scoring system if you're irritating patients and need your partner to start all your lines? 
I also find these medics to be really slow on scenes, to have a tendency to overthink calls, and to not be able to accept the term idiopathic. Dumb, incapable, bad partner, long shift ahead. Maybe we can get in a crash that's bad enough to get me sent home, but bad enough to actually hurt me. Like that's all that can be said about these kinds of partners. Nobody's 100% smart and nobody is 0% skilled. So the patterns of where your coworkers fall on the chart probably looks more like a scatter plot like this. The good news, a person's spot on the chart isn't genetically determined or set in stone. It's up to each of us to move upwards and to the right. We can educate ourselves and we can practice our skills. Get a book, talk to people better educated than you are, go to a conference, find a good continuing education program, expand your comfort zone. Improvement on both axes requires conscious effort mixed with some hard won experience. Hopefully you feel like I do. Our job is important enough to warrant the effort. Let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with that. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and share. This is Angry Bill for Pre-Hospital Wisdom. Until next time, stay safe.